Hey guys, welcome to the Inter Microwave Oven Podcast. Here today are your hosts, Bree <laughs> and Kieran. There was a very long pause. <laughs> I always pause when I get to that point because it's like, it's like a, you know, like that first bit is a script and then it's just a blank and I'm like, hmm. Hmm, interesting. And it takes me a minute to remember that names. Oh, poor you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, today we're doing horror stuff. By the way, Brie, how are you? I am good. How are you? Uh, dead. I was drunk. Ah. That was it. <laughs> That's the extent of my day. I drew something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh, it's so cold. Okay. And so we're going to be talking about horror stuff. Horror movies, horror, whatever. It's a broad topic of horror and... I'm not gonna say my joke. That that was mean. Okay. What is your joke? No. <laughs> okay. But will you ever tell me? If I remember later. Oh, all right. Okay. So, what are we talking? About? We we know what we're talking about. Do you want to start one? <laughs> yeah, I can start one. Um. Do you remember, uh, I think I might have sent it to you, it was like, um, it was like a story, it was like this guy who was a magician and he ran into like, man, I can't remember what exactly the plot was, but it, it was under horror, it was like a Reddit story. Oh my gosh, I think I remember, was it the guy that went to the, um, what was that? Interesting. What? I, no, I, it was it the guy that like, went to the circus as like, Yes! Oh my gosh, I forgot about the circus. He went to the circus and then like they cut a woman in half and it was like for real, but because it was magic, they put the woman back together. Yeah, I never Um, finished that. I wish I did. I I did. It like it goes. I think at some point they pulled it from the horror part of Reddit because then it went into more like adventure. Um. At one point, like it starts at the circus at the first place, and then at one point they're in, I think, Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. And he meets the magician guy again. No, I went up to there. That was the last place yeah. I left off. They went to Vegas already. Yeah, and then I don't exactly remember what happens after, but it's like, um, yeah, you, you don't mind spoilers, right? No, I don't care. Yeah, it was, I don't know, like some kind of conspiracy. They went to like a whole nother dimension, maybe. I don't know. Secret magic realm. I don't exactly remember. But they went somewhere like there to some kind of a house with other people with magic. And they were like kind of imprisoned there for a bit. And then they made their grand escape. Is that the end? Yeah, so it starts as horror, but then it became a bit more fleshed out as a story. And it was like less... So they didn't put it in the horror category anymore after that. Don't you love when you start a horror story and it starts becoming an actual story, so you adapt it so it becomes an actual cohesive story? Yeah, <laughs> that feels what such a common feeling. If I had a quarter of every time that Nicole. happened... No, it's it's a quarter. I'm sorry, I'm changing it. A quarter? No, yeah. If, oh I, had, if I had a quarter for every time that that has happened... I'd have two. (laughs) It's not a lot. It's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. (laughs) You nitpicking the type of coin is really annoying. (laughs) I'm just saying. It's a nickel, not a quarter. Honestly, I'm so sad I haven't thought about that, like, to finish it, because I remember liking it so far, but I think I just kept zoning out to the point that I didn't remember what I was reading anymore. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know when that happens? Yeah, I'm not really, sure. I don't, I, like, I, I, like, I vaguely remember it, but I cannot remember any of the details. Like, I even forgot the circus bit. I just knew that it was horror at first, posted to the horror, like, subreddit or whatever. And then it was removed from there because, like, the one, the, the person who was writing it was like, okay, this isn't leading towards horror anymore, so I moved it somewhere else. And then I remember, like, finding it on, like, one of those videos that reads it out for you. Yeah. I just, um, but yeah, I remember reading it, and then I don't remember anything else. All I can remember is, like, purple, vaguely, 
and perhaps wings, maybe wings. Yeah, and then and then maybe maybe I think they're all living at a house now. Like they did a grand escape, and then the person just started following. Like then the one normal guy, like the one normal guy, everyone's just at his house chilling. Like all the escapees, some might have been children, maybe. I think the magician was a child. <laughs> I think a magician was a child. Yeah, maybe, perhaps. But there was definitely something purple in there. I can't remember what, though. No, there was definitely a purple bit, now that you think about it. No, yeah. there, there was definitely at least one purple bit. I don't know what it was. It, it, it was important, right? The guy might have had, like, purple hair, perhaps. It, it has to be some kind of descriptor factor, because I think guy with purple hair sounds really similar to what you know you probably didn't know the name (laughs) i can't i really can't remember their name at all any of the names like probably all nothing i remember you being like they'd be so good together (laughs) yeah i I still stand by it i think did they ever be a thing no oh Oh. I mean, it kind of just ends there, and it's like you know. I think I think they're like living, like like I said, they're living at his house. But honestly, subtext. That's that's about it. No, not 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 even subtext. Just oh. um, friends being friends, perhaps. Lies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I just thought they had some cool you know interactions and that's 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 about the extent of my you know i can't think of the word right now knowledge yeah sure (laughs) yeah sure (laughs) (laughs) sorry it's all right I, I remember that story, but I wish I remembered more about it. <laughs> yes. Wish I followed it yes. better. It was cool. There are days where I don't know how to read. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Going on the topic of Reddit, though. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about Handstand Man for a second? <laughs> I was gonna ask if that's, if that's on topic or not. Yeah, it is. Um, I have this irrational fear of handstands now because of this guy. And this black, <laughs> it, just, just, just dark, shadowy figures. I mean, I think that's not <laughs> irrational, but I think it's just irrational and, you know? Yeah, it's a little... Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so the story goes that the guy, it's one of those 911 operator calls, and he's just talking on the phone, and he's like, there's someone outside on the window, and he, he's just, he's just doing a handstand in my back. Menacingly. Yard. <laughs> and, and the guy was, and he was just, it was just a 911 operator, right? And then eventually he's like, he like turns around, he looks back, and he's like, um, he's at the window now and he's just smiling at me and, and like I don't know why but it always like gives me such a chill whenever I whenever I read that part or I like think about it because anything by windows just you know just smiling it's not a good picture to try conjuring in your brain and I have like partial aphantasia I cannot like conjure things in my head properly so it kind of comes out like if I want to see a figure it'll be like really shadowy but I do know how to eerily draw like mouths and eyes so that's the only thing that I could like do properly mm, I is... remember those those mouths and eyes those yes are... anyway it, it freaks me the hell out and like I don't know it, it, they it, go like missing or something yeah they go missing that's the end of it he goes like he's like don't open that door and he's like i i think he's inside the house and then it just kind of ends in there you know mm-hmm. and i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest the vibe that i got from that story like obviously i knew the story before i knew the reference that i'm about to make but like i've made the connection that this story gives the vibes of the the guy sobbing what you want and then the person responding i want waffle fries oh my god <laughs> that's 
all I can think about is you retelling it. No, that's so right, and I hate it. <laughs> and, like it's it's basically that because like the guy like his whole scare factor is you know obviously just being creepy like that's creepy but then he does a handstand and it's a little bizarre. That that's what I think scares me the most. It's like this guy cannot actually be human nor sane. <laughs> he does a handstand. Can't be human. <laughs> it's the middle of the night. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh boy, I can't wait to tell you about drunk acrobats. I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve it. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Do you have another one? Another one. Okay. Um. Oh, recently. Um. Okay. So there's so recently I came across this game. There's this YouTuber I watched. He's called Manly Badass Hero. A very fun name. Me. Yeah. And he's actually like I, I I usually watch him when like I want to watch something to take like my brain off of it. But like I can't watch normal YouTubers because they're all like hyper. This guy's surprisingly just chill. Oh, is this the horror guy? Yeah, this is the horror guy. And one of his videos, um, he made it like a couple man- months back already. It's, uh, he like, he basically does playthroughs and stuff. And so he did one on this game called, I think, Your Boyfriend. And the game only has like one chapter out, and it's also apparently 18 plus, but he censors like anything that's not, you know, not good. And it's, it's it's in chapter one it's still fine it's like chapter two and onwards that it's like you need to be 18 and plus to play the game um but chapter one was fine and he censors anything that's like even like close to not fine so i watched that playthrough um it's basically about like um basically a typical you know yandere thing you play as a player and then your boyfriend is just get this it's it's just a guy with a circle for a head Yes. That's it. There is like, <laughs> like the style. No ears, no nose, just eyes and mouth. I have many questions. <laughs> That's the style of the game. The other characters too. Like they might have a few more details. Like they might actually have hair, but they don't have ears. I don't think they have noses either. Oh. And it's and it's not even like anything to do with the story. It's just the style choice. That is so funny to me. I have no I know. I, I have like no words. Yeah. So, so it's just it's basically like a typical yandere thing. a uh, guy like randomly shows up at the park and you have like a couple options, like either agree to go like he calls himself like your boyfriend, you know, oh title drop. <laughs> <laughs> I I I'm still reeling about the um choices they made. Yeah. Artistically. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, um, and do you want a picture? Uh, yes. Uh, Alright. Do I want a picture? I need a visual. Yeah, so, um, basically, uh, it's just typical yandere thing, um, like, he calls himself your boyfriend, you have, like, three-ish routes that you could go on where it's, like, you either say no very aggressively or say yes very aggressively is it is it better to be in the middle there i mean i suppose there is a middle where you can re- where you can just kind of be silent and he's like ah oh, right that was weird i'll leave now oh i hate when they do that <laughs> i okay, absolutely I'm hate gonna... that i'm sorry that's like my least favorite thing to happen ever well, okay, like, I found a couple. Like, um, you're awkward. <laughs> I'm awkward. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and if you reject him aggressively, apparently, like, something to do with his character is, like, uh, that's the only one I could find that was normal. I sent it in Discord, but. Oh. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I, I know who, I know this now. You know this. Okay. I know this now. I understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you reject him, all right. So, um, one of the things if you reject him aggressively, he's like, "What? Then what are you doing here?" And it's like they're at the park, but apparently it's some fourth wall break that I did not understand until I saw the comments. Fourth wall breaks. Go on. 
yeah anyway i don't know what else to really say because it's only like one chapter so far but at the end of all the chapters like i only bring this game up because it reminds me of the end at the end of and what you're saying about handstand man at the end he's like no matter what route you do throughout the day he shows up like at your window just like his shadow peering in yeah so <laughs> so handstand man reminded me of that now that we're talking about my greatest fears that's kind of <laughs> irrational but also like justified uh this mm-hmm. isn't like a horror story since it happened to me and I, what yeah <laughs> okay in real life horror story i hate disembodied hands mm. That's like weird because I can handle statues of disembodied hands, right? Like, like when we went, when I visited, and there was just disembodied hands everywhere. It's just a statue, and they're like, you know, decorative purposes in the houses we were looking at, right? Mm-hmm. Those don't bother me. I don't know what kind of disembodied hands bother me, but they have to be smoother, right? Um, so, I w- it was it was like two in the morning one day, and. As you do, you're kind of just on your phone, right? Gosh, I'm getting chills again. Like, you're just on your phone, Instagram, maybe texting you. I might have told you about this. I think I did. I, I There's no way I couldn't have told you about this. But, um, like, I was just on my phone. And then I feel... Like at the corner of my eye, I see some kind of like movement, and uh, like I'm on a bu- I'm like on the top of a bunk. But under my bed is like an office where I used to go, where I used to live, and uh, I see like movement, and I'm like, oh, maybe someone's just like you know under there. But it's two in the morning. That's kind of weird, and I feel like a very hard tug on my phone wire, you know. I was like, oh, maybe maybe something just dropped, you know? Like, maybe I, like, dropped uh, one of my stuffed animals and they just, like, fell off my bed and it just, I don't know, tugged on the string. And then a few seconds later, the exact consistency, like, the exact same strength in the same way, it gets tugged again. And I think I saw, like, a hand and it was, like, all white and it was terrifying and I'll never recover. <laughs> Um, I, well, did something happen? Did anything happen after that? Or um, after the hand just disappeared? Nothing. I like, I couldn't sleep. I just, I just lay on my bed. And I was like, oh my gosh, just go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, just go to sleep. Just go to sleep. <laughs> and then I woke up and I was like, dad, dad, <laughs> dad. <laughs> Um, and I told him the story, and he was like, Oh my gosh, sorry, you, you just turned on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, Dad. And are you in Charlotte for a bit? You good? No, I'm not okay. And he's like, Oh, yeah. And he's like, he, Like, I knew this about him already, but he has some sort of, like, really good sixth sense. And he's like, oh, I guess, I guess you kind of have some of that too, because sometimes I, that happens to me. And I was like, Dad, <laughs> do we have holy water? And he's like, oh yeah, definitely we do. And so we just holy water the hell out of that house. <laughs> and it's safe. And no, I mean like. I know we live with ghosts in that house. It, it wasn't like a new thing. Sometimes the microwave just would turn on. Like I, I kind of assumed they were benevolent because they didn't do anything, you know. Like upstairs, upstairs there would just be like footsteps and no one's up there, you know. Those kind of things. Because like when we moved in there, there used to be like glass bottles up there you know when we moved in there was just like alcohol bottles all over the place and it was like maybe someone just died here and they're like haunting the attic which is fine like she didn't do anything except a few times when someone would have a dream that someone's on their chest so we just kind of assume she's there um terrifying terrifying now that i think about it but um no (laughs) No yeah, I don't family. think you have you heard of the Adams family? Yeah, I have heard of the Adams family. Have you heard of their disembodied 
hand butler. Oh yeah, I have. Not a fan. <laughs> no, I bet you wouldn't. <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm half convinced that me and my dad and my sister have a sixth sense because I know Juniper has been like seeing ghost faces. She's not like in sleep paralysis because she can move, nor is she like asleep. <laughs> she knows that for a fact because she can see the time. So she's literally just seeing faces in the middle of the night. I don't know. She says she has a really good visual, uh, visual cortex. I think that's what I like told her. Like you have a good visual memory. Like she can conjure images in her head like really vividly. So I'm like putting it down to like you're just seeing like your room and your your brain is literally just so overactive. So. <laughs> I've heard of, I don't know if I told you, like, this isn't exactly the same, but it's the, remember I was telling you, like, there was a, some kind of, like, I forgot where or when, but it was, like, some kind of, uh, not a ritual, a tradition for, like, young girls to go into a completely dark room, look at a mirror, and then they would see the face of their husband, but if they saw, like, a skull, they would die before they got married. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then it's, like, scientifically proven that if you look at a mirror in a dark room, you'll see creepy visions and stuff. Oh, yeah. Because that's... your brain just goes wild. No, yeah, that's... So that's, that's that. Exactly, that is exactly what Sophia probably has. But, like, I wouldn't put it past our family to have that kind of sixth sense. Like, I'm not... I'm not super supernatural, but I do know they probably exist because it would be kind of ignorant to think that they don't. <laughs> like, like, there's definitely things out there but like i'm not big into it <laughs> i just don't I, like i don't know like how much i do believe in like ghosts and such like i believe in an afterlife i just yeah i just where does that energy go because i know you lose weight when you die and i am <laughs> wait, 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 wait. you lose weight no yeah this is scientifically proof like after all is said and done right you lost your fluids, you lose everything. Your body does lose some kind of weight that it has in it. It's not the same. Oh my god, it's a secret to, get, to getting skinny. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not a lot of weight. It's just literally, a, it's just a few, a few ounces of weight. And I'm like, half. Mm-hmm. Because, like, energy can't be destroyed, can't be created. So I'm, like, half... I, I'm convinced there is some kind of, like, ghostly form or whatever. Um, I don't care. Either way, I just want them to leave me alone. <laughs> I think that was the most Jonathan Sims I've said in my life, but I mean it. <laughs> like, like, I joke that I kin him a lot, but I mean it. Just leave me alone and we'll be fine. <laughs> Exist separate from me, okay? I don't I don't want this shenanigans. <laughs> Too tired. Don't like drama. Anyway, that's why now we're moving to a newly built house. <laughs> no no ghosts there. No no ghosts in newly built houses, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's your turn. I kind of went off. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, okay. What do I... Hmm. Man, I'm drawing up a blank here. I'm going to talk about Manly again. Manly? Um, yes. A Manly bad obscure, the YouTuber. Um, okay. let's see what I can remember. There was a fun one that was like... I think Sucker for Love, and it was like um, like an eldritch horror type of thing, but it was also a dating sim at the same time. As you do, as you do. I think you talked about this one. <laughs> Those are my favorite videos, the ones that are like half romance, half horror. Because you think, because you, you understand, you understand like romance and comedy or romance and adventure, but romance and horror, nice. I'm used to that. <laughs> you can either fear, you can either be, you can either fear it or be attracted to it, and it's like, ah, you know why? But whatever. Yeah. Um, I feel like yeah. that's most relationships with me, though. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I'm the one to be feared or loved, which is really weird to me. Mm. Oh, you are an eldritch horror. I'm an eldritch horror. You're welcome. <laughs> 
Oh, does Heather's count as horror? Probably not. No, yeah, it is. It counts as horror? Yeah, it's Heather's the musical horror. Well, not even musical either, just anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. it's a, it isn't a technically a horror movie. Not technically, but I think a lot of people put oh. it in there. I'll talk about Carrie instead. Maybe not. I already talked about Carrie. Eh. Sure, I'll talk about Carrie. Go on, Carrie. You know, Stephen King uh, wrote a book. It's called Carrie. Um, it was turned into like a movie, and it was like I think it was kind of maybe run like famous and renowned because of the fact that well, what was it? Um. Because it was like, I think it plays as like a normal high school thing, like the girl is getting bullied, and then at the end she goes psycho and murders everyone. I love when that happens. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. I hope no one no. takes that out of context. I mean, in writing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some, some nice clarification. <laughs> I your your response told me everything but I didn't give enough. <laughs> well, okay. yeah, not really no. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. But yeah. Um I wish I could remember like anything interesting. There's one about drinking a cup of coffee at the office. Excuse me. It's like you're drinking coffee at the office and like typing and doing work. But then uh, your coworker is like, hey, you're not supposed to drink the coffee, but you keep drinking it anyway. Um, and then your boss calls you, and then you got to answer, and if you don't answer, he makes you answer. Like, it just answers by itself. And he's like, hey, you're not supposed to drink the coffee. Please stop drinking the coffee. It's reducing your working speed by half because you're only using one hand. Like, one hand to type and one hand to drink coffee. And then if, if, if you keep going for long enough, the whole universe kind of, like, collapses in the game. Oh. Because of yeah. coffee. The coffee. It's the coffee. You know, uh, I don't mind if the universe falls apart if I can get my cup of coffee. Copy. It's worth it. Chaotic neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Copy. It's worth it. Mm. Mm, Copy. I'm in it for me, guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm in it for me. There's an entire song in the musical that I did based on coffee. I should send you those those stuff, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. I should. I should show you my musical later. Uh, no, but like. No, it it was the most oh, out of character in character I've been in a production. <laughs> Just that song. Nice. It's me going crazy, going hard. <laughs> yeah, you did. There's there's one horror movie, a uh, horror that I read on Reddit first, and then I bought the book because it was so good, and it's called Pen Pal. And mm-hmm. basically, they do this school project as kids, and they like they write a letter, and it's kind of like, oh, can you be my pen pal? Like we can keep doing this, and they kind of like send it off, you know. And then if they want to like write back, they will. And this little kid, he's like very small. He finally gets one, and oh, finally he has a friend, you know. Yeah. Um, but then. Wait. We interrupt the microwave oven to advertise our very first ad for Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Super convenient. Super awesome. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Trust me, it's great. Yep, we use it on everything. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
But then, like, eventually, he keeps talking to this guy, and it keeps going on and on, until one day, one of his letters comes in, and it's a blurry picture, right? And he doesn't know what it is. He doesn't know what it is. He's just like, oh, okay, it's a, it's a blurry picture, you know? But then he, they keep writing, and then this guy keeps giving it back, and it's more blurry pictures. And eventually it becomes more, like, clear that this picture is of the child, right? But, like, in, in like, places where you wouldn't, like, he's, like, doing something, or he's in a window, and, like, the mom's, like, freaked out, because, like, oh my gosh, this, this guy's literally stalking my child, and, Mm -hmm. like, this guy had a childhood friend, and, um, all, all, but, I, I don't, I don't entirely remember how the story goes anymore, but, uh, spoilers, someone kind of got buried alive. Oh. No, yeah, they find the guy, they find the justice, but a lot of people died because of him. <laughs> and oh. it, it was a very, it was a very, like, stalking, terrifying story. <laughs> and it, it's terrifying, like... I, if I, I'm gonna probably reread that because I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just searched it up. I searched it up. Here's the actual plot because I don't know if I did it justice or like if I did it correctly because I may have like mixed it with other stories with similar kind of premises because I was so addicted to this and I think I'm gonna like read it again. I'm gonna, you want me to read the plot synopsis because I want you to read it too. <laughs> Uh, yes. Okay. Pen Pal is told via. This is Wikipedia. Pen Pal is told via a series of lo- non linear recollections of, by an anonymous narrator trying to make sense of mysterious events that happened to him during his childhood, the truth of which had been kept from him by his mother all his life. Okay, so I think I'm starting to remember that he was an adult going back to his hometown trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> As a boy in kindergarten, the narrator becomes best friends with another student named Josh. One day, their class conducts a pen pal experiment in which the children tie self-addressed letters to balloons and send them off. Yada, yada, yada. While most of their children get letters back, the narrator starts to believe his balloon got lost until he receives an envelope containing a single, poorly shot Polaroid photos. Over the school year, he will receive over 50 other pictures, all without any letter. Soon after, he realizes that the pictures are all of himself and his mother, which she calls the police. Um, uh, He recalls a series of disconnected events. While innocuous to him as a child, takes a sinister new meeting from an adult perspective. A neighborhood snow cone seller once returned the same dollar bill to the narrator he included in his initial pen pal later. I will not, uh, while out playing in a ditch with Josh, the narrator became aware of a strange clicking noises he later identified as camera flashes. The narrator once found a strange drawing in a pair of shorts he left by a riverside containing a depiction of himself aside a much larger man, one of the narrator's elderly. Um, someone was presumed dead after blah 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 he recalls awakening in the woods one night in his pajamas and finding his way back home to discover the police looking for him he later discovered a letter on his bed stating his intentions to run away although the narrator knows says his name was misspelled shortly after this incident the narrator's mother discovers something in the house crawl space that prompts her to sell the home and move so basically this guy was in the house already <laughs> in like a crawl space that he'd like go in and out mm, that's kind of creepy yeah he also like noticed it after the sleepwalking incident he his cat disappears and he looks at the narrator's old house to look for it where they discover cat food and adult man's clothing inside the crawl space as also a shrine consisting of multiple polaroids in the narrator's room pursued by an unseen individual who took his picture during the chase josh drops the walkie-talkie he and the narrator had been using to keep in touch and later that night the nar- narrator hears boxes meowing coming from his own walkie-talkie um 
uh no more no more for you because um yeah because i kind of want other people to read it and i hope people read it now (laughs) that is spooky i know Um, i know a lot of it is on um i think reddit uh yeah on reddit there's just only some details that weren't in reddit that's now in the novel but you can definitely just read it for free which i did once (laughs) nice i liked it a lot it it took me one day (laughs) (laughs) ah yes hyper reading yeah that's this one reminds me of uh of a book called when she was gone Ooh, i think you told me about that book that i bought and and i never it's basically like it's got like a two-way thing like it focuses on this mother um I think she had maybe two daughters. I, yeah, two daughters, I think. Yeah. Um, but then one went missing, and then when that one went missing, stuff just started to fall apart. Or like, I think she got a divorce from her husband, and she became on less good terms with the remaining daughter. And then this is like years later. Like, uh, she meets this guy, so it's kind of a romance. Uh, she meets this guy, and then, like, uh, he sees that the, the, he's got a daughter. And this daughter is, like, looks surprisingly like her, like her child that went missing. And so when I read the summary, I thought that that meant that there was, like, like, uh, like that was... I thought that the daughter was her, but the daughter is daughter when she went missing was like 16 ish and the little girl the the guy's daughter is like only six like she just looks similar oh um and so the story kind of plays out where she's trying to figure out like what's going on like why why she looks so similar and she she's like falling in love with the guy you know she got a divorce uh, her ex-husband has like a different wife and her daughter is dating someone, but is like hiding who it is from like, like the daughter that didn't go missing is like hiding who she's dating. And the whole story kind of unravels. It turns out that there was this like uh, creepy old lady, like there was this like lady, she was like creepy and bad. And she was the tutor for the missing girl, like a math tutor. Yeah. And she basically kidnaps like and she fell in and so she fell in love with this author and the author actually ends up being the one who the mother like I, this may be a bit confusing because i don't remember their names okay the this creepy lady fell in love with this author the author being uh the mother like the one who the mother is like dating and the one with the daughter who looks like yeah the mom yeah i mean you know what i mean hopefully this is a little hard to explain but it basically um she, the, the tutor basically kidnaps the girl and like leaves her in the basement at first she treats her nice and then she gets like a, like a sample thing to get her pregnant um, and then because she, she's trying to get the author to love her so she's like author uh, we had this like this this is uh, this is our child you know like totally so she like fakes being pregnant and then like she has like a fake baby bump basically for nine months and then once it's the the teenage girl gives birth she's gonna take that baby and be like oh yes this is our our child but this ends up going wrong because the guy like doesn't really like her oh so he like like even though there's a baby he kind of like distance himself from her like is willing like willing to be around the daughter who is now born and but distance himself from the creepy lady and the, the, the when this relationship starts going like downhill the creepy tutor lady starts treating the teenage girl worse and worse and then eventually just leaves her to die in the basement oh. which is really it's really messed up she die? Wait, don't tell me. I might read this. <laughs> oh, uh, I might have given like a ton of spoilers then. Lucky for you, I'm very bad at explaining. No, I, I followed. Them. I followed. It's just I like it better when I know. Like sometimes I like it like I like it better with a synopsis than without because sometimes like beginnings drag on for too long. <laughs> Yeah. So okay, so it's called Then She Was Gone. I could read the actual synopsis. It's I have pretty the short. Book. You have it? 
I do. You told me about this book before, and I never uh, like I read the beginning and then I <laughs> forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> as as you do because I was starting to read Percy Jackson too. Mm, yeah, so Percy Jackson would definitely take the cake because there's so many books. <laughs> Yeah. I was in the middle you know, of actually, reading Percy Jackson. I wanted to tell you something this for a while, but I went to like the doll like yes, I bought three books like I think yesterday ish. Nice. Guess how much they costed. And these are like hardcover books. Well, two of them are hardcovers. If this is less than thirty dollars, I'm hurting you. That's how much. What? Guess how much? Oh wait, you already said less than thirty dollars. Okay, so two hardcover books. And one other soft cover books costing me three seventy five. What? I bought them from the dollar store. What? Because <laughs> the dollar store is like a little section for books, but it's like all unorganized, and like there's only one copy of like each book. But I found three that was interesting. I'm like, these are only one twenty seven, like uh, 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 one twenty five. Of course, I'm gonna buy them. Are they at least good? Okay, so, yeah, so, so far I started reading one called The Jewel Thief. The actual price is $19, but because I got it from the dollar store, only $125. Oh my and God. so far it's really good. What the heck? When? Yeah, let me read, let me read the synopsis. <laughs> when did my life be that easy? <laughs> and again, literally, hard two of them are hard covers. Unbelievable. I know. Okay, let me read to you the synopsis. 16 year old Juliette Pateau had the world at her feet, the daughter of the finest gem cutter in all of Paris. She attended private balls at the Lure. Oops. At the eye of a handsome young scribe named <laughs> Rene and watches King Louis the Fourteenth handshake to her father, Jean, as his crown jeweler. But when Louis purchases the Tavernier Violet, a large duplo diamond, the likes of which the French court has never seen, Jean is overcome with fear. Cutting such a diamond is risky and there's no room for error. While the pressure of the commission sends Jean into depression, Juliet takes it upon herself to save the diamond cut. Thus begins her inevitable descent. Now suspected of, te- of stealing the Tavernier, Juliet sits in cold and filthy in her dungeon cell. A pardon from the king is all she can hope for, but to earn his shelf to prove that her motives were in service of the crown. To Juliet's surprise and delight, the court reports Renee to record, to record her confession, but Renee holds his own bitter grudge against Juliet and is about as close to forgetting her that Juliet is to her freedom. With one night still all, Juliet must win back her life so she can win back her laws. Oh my gosh. Yes. And so it's really good so far. Like, I was like a little bit iffy on whether I should actually get them, but again, 125, what is there to lose? Like, it's hardcover. Like, even if I absolutely hate the book, it's a hardcover book. But it's actually pretty good so far. Hey, it's like, no it starts, like, she's already in jail, and the story is told through her telling Renee, her ex-boyfriend, basically, telling him about, like, the story such she may perhaps be pardoned, you know, like they said. Uh, she's trying to tell her story and convince that it's, like, you know, it's all good, that, you know, she was, what the... I'm only, like halfway maybe a third of the way through the book and she's like trying to convince them that she didn't mean anything too bad by doing what she did and it's really interesting that sounds interesting that that never happens what the heck no i was like are you i was like genuinely shocked i had to ask my mom the second time like uh do you think this is one dollar like this is the dollar store but you sure? This seems a little too good. Do but too good to be true? Yeah, it's one dollar twenty-five. My goodness. Oh my goodness. I could never. The other one, the other hardcover book is a dragon story. <gasps> Automatically a take 13... it, obviously. I know. It's I haven't read it yet, but it's like a 13-year-old is getting bullied, but she makes a friend with someone unlikely, a dragon, who can also have a human form. And the girl is like 13, the dragon is like millennia old, and there's some kind of dragon war or something. I hope it's, um, like, what's it called? Mentor? Mentee? I think it's like friends. No, that's good too. I like that. Sometimes with these stories, they make them lovers, and I'm like, 
Oh, I oh, think God. it's I think it's a girl dragon, perhaps. Oh, okay. Does that change yeah. anything? <laughs> no. Exactly. But it's a girl dragon. I mean, it does kind of change like how how likely do you think they're gonna make a thirteen year old dragon girlfriend like? I would. I, I hope they don't do anything like that. But again, people. <laughs> Gosh, it, it's it's fifteen over the limit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, should should we end here? Yeah, that end wasn't very corner, was it? I mean, no, but it's fun anyway. <laughs> the horror of a good book steal. <laughs> Hey, dude, like, (laughs) would it be this podcast if we didn't veer off the main topic by the end? No, it wouldn't. No, exactly. (laughs) That's that's the point. (laughs) This is a microwave. We don't end up with the same thing. It's always always weird. It's always something uh, off topic and weird sometimes. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> we got real life, we got stories, and then we got discount books. You know, tangents work. <laughs> Makes it authentic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Now go radiate your favorite <laughs> hot pockets and boil some tea. Good night. You're not gonna say good night? Oh, good night. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>